Well, welcome. I'm Joan Beal here with CCSVI Alliance, and I'm thrilled to be able to sit next to a doctor and a, a human being and a person who has impacted my life personally, and I know the lives of so many of us. Uh, Dr. Paolo Zamboni, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. To everybody. And Dr. Zamboni presented some very compelling research this morning looking at post venoplasty patients yes. who have CCSVI and are treated, and you use two new types of scanning. Can you tell us about those types of scans that you utilize? Yes, but uh, uh, the objective of this research is to understand if problems in the extracranial veins uh, may lead to reduced perfusion in the brain. This is very important because if you have uh, good perfusion, this means more oxygen for your brain cells, and uh, this really increases the chance to repair damage of different uh, mm -hmm. neurodegenerative disease. Uh, we believe that, uh, or our hypothesis, is that uh, the impairment and restricted venous outflow from the brain could cause uh, or could contribute uh, to reduce uh, perfusion mm -hmm. in the brain. So we decided to study with uh, uh, a different scan respect to uh, MRI. The scan is uh, scintigraphy, is a radio nuclide, a tracer that is injected. Okay, in so the, the tracer brain. is injected in the yes. veins. And it's hydrophilic, so diffuse the brain parenchyma okay. without any problem for the barrier. And after this, stay for some hours inside the cell. Okay. So we have a beautiful map of the perfusion in the different region. Very, very precise. This gives us the opportunity without healthy controls. Mm -hmm to compare this map with the map of normality. Mm. We have an extensive database of uh, thousands of cases mm -hmm. with no neurodegenerative disorders, and we may compare the perfusion of our patients with normal controls. The first new today is that in this little pilot study, we found the strong and significant differences in terms of perfusion where CCSVI is uh, respect to normal population. And the other things is that when you fix the flow mm -hmm. with uh, angioplasty and we use a different techniques, mm -hmm. but we may speak after right. this or right. more. This, but you feel the flow right. in, in the extracranial veins, we found increased perfusion, so better oxygenation one month later respect to res restoration of the outflow. So this was a month out from the treatment, you were still seeing this restoration of perfusion and an improvement. So we, we do know that there is lower perfusion in multiple sclerosis, that's a known fact. Yes, uh, this is a fact. Yeah. And certainly, you cannot explain perfusion without immunity. Mm. Uh, because there is uh, no correlation between perfusion right. and, and, the, immune system. and the immune system. Right. Okay. So, this is one aspect without a current explanation. Right. But it's a fact right. in a mess. So we are trying to give more light uh, on the hypoperfusion that we know affect the patient with mass. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we think that the contributor to this negative factor, because if you should have perfusion, your chance to remyelinate or to uh, to a more defensive mechanism. Right, and remyelination 
is contingent upon oxygenation of the brain. Absolutely. And the delivery of glucose. So many things that are important for the brain depend on perfusion. Yes. Also, also glucose uh, mm -hmm. uh, use uh, in terms of uh, uh, proteic synthesis, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, oligodendrocyte is a specialized cell that produces myelin. But if you should have low oxygen or low glucose level in a certain area due to low perfusion, the possibility of these cells to produce and repair myelin practically is zero. Well, I'm very excited that you're taking on this form of research right now. I think it's going to give more concrete scientific evidence to pre-treatment and post-treatment, which is what we need. Wouldn't you say we need biomarkers that show the difference before angioplasty for CCSDI and an actual improvement afterwards? And this is very important. Now, the PET scan study that you did, this was, was this different? How was this different? Yes, PET is a system uh, used for uh, have news about metabolism. Metabolism, okay. So uh, this means that the, if you should have more active uh, neurons, there is more metabolism, more activity, mm -hmm. and maybe more reparative process. Mm -hmm. Uh, SPECT is more simple because it uh, uh, gives us uh, an idea of the oxygen delivery in the different regions of the brain. Now where do we go from here? What is your next study going, going to include these? Uh, after this positive pilot study, because in, really in the case uh, where we uh, were not able to fix a flow, we don't. We we did not measure improvement in, right. in, in the brain perfusion. Right. Whereas when we are, when we were capable to improve the outflow from the brain, we had uh, uh, a diffuse improvement in all the region of the brain. Hmm. All the regions of the brain. Uh, yes, uh, better perfusion. Huh. So this is interesting and the level of perfusion are significant. So uh, also respect the database of normality. So mm -hmm. this means that you may restore a good, uh, a good oxygen delivery. Based on this, now we start with blinded uh, measurement. Right. And also uh, uh, during the uh, procedure, we may collect blood for uh, different biomarkers, so we may have an idea of baseline, and usually we uh, wait for 15 minutes at the terms of the procedure uh, to have a second blood sample to compare with the, with the baseline in order to understand if uh, uh, we have some immediate recovery exactly in the jugular vein, so it's, mm. it's the, the blood coming from the brain. So uh, about the nitric oxide, the pyruvate, the lactate, and the uh, cytokines that we know uh -huh. are involved right. in neurodegeneration, so we may collect blood and to compare. Ah, so you'll see the markers before and after. Yes, huh? yes, this is one well part of the of the, of the study. Really. Wonderful, wonderful. And I just wanted to ask you, it's now five years since we first had that meeting in Bologna. Yes. And the changes that we've made, there have been many. New people have been brought in. We're looking at other diseases of neurodegeneration. Are you excited and energized by this? Yes. How are you doing? <laughs> no, no, I am really very happy because, you know, there is a big controversy, big opposition. Right. But uh, uh, we open a window yes. looking at the, at the, also at the outflow and not only at the inflow in the brain. Right. And maybe uh, we may collect data that can help uh, uh, 
researchers and patients and all the people that are involved with the, in the treatment of uh, neurovascular and neurodegenerative yes. disorders. This is for me is really exciting. It's and, the tip uh, of the iceberg, right? Yeah. We yeah. are just seeing. Yes, and uh, really happy with this. Yes, good. Well, we are so happy to see you and very thankful for your input. And um, thank you. And we will continue to bring you more stories from ISNVD, our fourth conference now. So thank you so much, Dr. Zamboni. Just thank you, Joe. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right.